I'm going to make this presentation in French. I hope you have your headsets to follow this presentation. These are the activities of the laboratory working group in 2022. What did we do? Well, we participated in developing surveillance recommendations with the EPI group and with a very specific laboratory section that controlled this test that concerned the testing strategy when to test how where who to test for cholera using the tools that we had available in particular pcr culture and rapid diagnosis tests we also participated in recommendations for environmental surveillance with the wash group and recommendations on environmental surveillance were published on the GTFCC website. These very, I won't go into the details of these recommendations, but basically they don't say that you need, they're not working on predicting epidemics. The other tools that we worked on were what we call technical tools, what we call our job aids, and these tools were developed especially for culture of uh, VC. And the fact sheet give important points that need to be highlighted when you are culturing VC, the critical points. These documents are all now online on the GFTCC website, in, and they should be in both English and French. There's a specific link, GTFCC link, for the laboratory documents that will allow you to access these guides and tools. So for next year, for this year, 2023 actually, we're continuing to develop these recommendations in particular for PCR. And we want to define minimum standards for cholera lab capacity. There's an, a lab capacity assessment project for each country. And so we need to define minimum standards. We will continue to develop new tools, in particular for stool specimen collection with uh, fact sheets to accompany this collection. And our new activities will include piloting this assessment, the lab capacity assessment in four countries. We'll also be developing targets or objectives to reach for molecular diagnostics and also independent evaluation of commercial PCR kits. So these are a lot of projects. It's quite ambitious. In 2022, we had a very ambitious roadmap that we didn't succeed in completing, but the developing of the surveillance recommendations were a priority because of the worldwide cholera context. So we will include some of these themes in the new uh, priorities for 2023, but we now have dedicated resources for specific projects, funding and funding also for consultants. And that's very important for us. And as Raul said earlier, we also uh, are interested, we call on volunteers to help us to develop these initial drafts. Some activities won't be led by the lab working group, but by partners who will consult the lab working group. So what we want is to continue to develop and reinforce surveillance capacities and laboratory capacities in the countries. As we saw in the previous slide, let me emphasize the need to have support from the lab working group. We are a small group, but it's important that people get involved. And I know that it's very time consuming to get involved in these working groups. We can also ask our institutions to perhaps support us with these activities. Recognition of this work would be a great help for the members of the lab working group. We also need the engagement of the countries in particular for this specific 
lab capacity assessment activity. I can't find the word in French, says the speaker, because it's so important to have a real vision of the lab capacities in the countries. And this is extremely important to help us better identify the areas for progress and the needs and the demands. We had a very pleasant surprise with direct contact this year with laboratories in different ways. And this was very pleasant for us to have direct exchanges with the labs, give them advice, answer their questions. So we felt that we could really help out. We felt very uh, committed and involved. And so this is something that we appreciate and that we encourage. And that's all for me. Thank you very much.